Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and anybody that's new, welcome. So today we are going to do Jenga block dogs. Uh, since I've did the cat, I've had a lot of requests and I've had so many dogs. You guys just must think I can <laughs> create every type of dog there is. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so we, I'm going to do one. The first one we're going to do, I'm going to try I'm going to do two, but I'm going to try to do three. So it just depends on how much time I have. Uh, this tutorial is probably going to be coming out late. I've been super busy with work. Um, we are going to start off with the Tumbling Tower, aka Jenga Blocks from Dollar Tree. You can find these in the toy aisle. I do get a lot of comments saying you can't find them. Here in Canada, we cannot order them online. We only can get them in the store. But I heard from fellow crafters that live in the U.S. You can order them online from the dollar, dollarstore.com site. And you can get them shipped free to your local store. Or you can look every once in a while, Dollar the Dollar um, Tree website does give you uh, a coupon for, it's a coupon code right on their website. Every few weeks they have a flat shipping rate of $5.99. So I, if you guys can, if you can't find them in your store, you can always try that. Now, I use Wellbond. I do not suggest using hot glue at all. If you use hot glue, they're not going to seal properly together. Now, any wood glue is good to use. Uh, I know there is a Dollar Tree wood glue that they sell. My store has never had them, so I just use Wellbond. Nikki has told me you can buy them. At, you can buy this at Hobby Lobby. I buy mine at Rona's here in Canada. I just like working with it, it seals pretty fast and it has worked well with me. Now we are gonna be using, and I always suggest working with blocks, is using the L-shaped carpenter ruler from Dollar Tree. You can find it in the hardware section. Uh, gluing them together is just makes them a lot more even because you know they're not quite even if you worked with them before. Some are a little bit longer than others and you can tell just by here, just a little bit. And sometimes some are a little bit thinner than others as well. Now, when I glue them, I do pre-glue them uh, just so I can figure out my design and so my video is not an hour or two long. So that's why I pre-glue before I start not do one by one. Sometimes they do go a little bit fast. If you do have a question, you can uh, message me in the comment. I'm more of a visual person, so if you get stuck somewhere, you can send me a picture. Uh, you can't send pictures here on YouTube, but you can send me a picture on my Crafty Shopper page just send me a private message there show me where you're stuck and i'd be happy to help i do work a full-time job so i do not answer if i'm working i do not answer my emails or my messages but i do once i get home so just give me a bare a couple hours and i will eventually get back to you that day now all the blocks for the dash hound we are going to do are going to be glued this way with the exception with the nose which is just small so anywhere we're just doing the left to right flat like that when you're gluing them and you're i'm using a mat and i get a lot of questions about the mat uh it's just a desk mat from ikea works really well i think it's like 5.99 and the best mat ever to take off any glue and paint and stuff like that i just really love it when you're gluing them you can put them together like this when you're gluing in sections and say you're doing another row and just keep moving them around up just make sure that they're even as you move them around just makes it a lot easier as you go along we are going to start with the body and i have everything written down so the first row we're going to start with is 11 11 12 12, another row of 12, 11, and 10. So for the dash home, we're going to be using 98 blocks together. Now, I'm looking for... I'm looking, paying attention more here. Don't pay attention for the evenness here because you can't add an extra block. So you just kind of want it to go a little bit round. This little part's gonna be covered later. You just wanna make sure that you have the little dip. The three 12s will be even, but the 11 and the 11, you just want it a little bit off, kind of like a little, just halfway between the block. 
kind of like a little step and then the same thing on the bottom we are going to glue those ones together now for the head or we'll just do the legs actually so the legs are just going to be two jangle blocks actually these ones are glued stacked not left to right and kind of making a square like a wood cube you're going to glue those on and i would just turn this upside down make sure they're glued on this part not that part and once you're gluing them Make sure the line is sticking out that you can see it, not like this, because it is just a little bit wider going this way than this way. And because you're only putting it on a, a Jenga block on the bottom like this, you have a little bit more space between the block. So, and then I'm going to glue that. So I would turn this upside down and I would just glue them appropriate where you want to be once those are glued on we're going to move to the neck and i had a piece and it's oh here we go the neck is only two side by side and you're just going to put it right on top of there just hanging over just a little bit now i'm just going to move this again guys I'm trying to put the camera a little bit closer. You can see, usually I have a little bit wider. Now the head, we're gonna do four. So you're gonna have four rows like this, or four blocks, and times four rows. Two, three, four, glued together. The head is gonna be upright, so the longer part is gonna be up, facing upwards. I'm gonna bring this back down. Now, when you glue this onto the neck, glue it in the center. I don't know if it's even because I don't want to stick my head under the camera. Just make sure it's glued even once you glue this head on top. I'm just gonna stick this here. But we're not gonna do it directly this way. We're gonna put it on an angle. So a little bit to the left. So he's kind of looking to his side for his nose, we're gonna do, now this is the nose that's three stacked, not side by side, stacked like this, and two extra blocks right there. Like that. But his head's gonna be turned a little bit left and centered on the neck block. I'm gonna get these glued and then we'll move on from there. All right, so, I let it all glued together and I had Lisa mention in one of my, I think my last video or my cat video to show my Dremel drill that I got from Home Depot. Uh, it's just a basics instead of using the sander. I still use this on corners. These are just filing um, nail files from DT, buffer from the automotive and there's another one from um, the crafting section. But I just find, since I work with a lot of um, a lot of builds, that I finally splurged. I think it was about $50 uh, for the pen itself. And I just, it's so much easier to work with. It's gonna might be a little bit loud, but I'm just gonna show you. I did round out here, as you can see, and I did more of the nose, so it was more rounded uh, in the, around the nose area. And just slightly, just around I haven't done the front here, so I'll just show you how it's so easy to work. And a little bit loud. And I have, I just, this is one of my favorite, uh, I never thought about it until my stepmother said, why don't you get one of those hand drills? drills that you know would make make your life a lot easier instead of using the nail file and it sure does so since i do a lot of builds it works really well um for my american crafter friends i don't know how much they would charge in the u.s for one i know we pay a little bit more for stuff up here in canada but you know if you're going to do a lot of the builds and it would be good even for like popsicle sticks or paint sticks too uh 
anything that you work with any kind of cubes wood cubes or anything like that would be really great it's i love it so i am just gonna finish there i didn't do the back side so i wanted a little bit more round once once i finish the filing off i am gonna just use some dt uh black paint I am gonna do like the Dash Hound Wiener Dog, I guess you could, it also, I think they're the similar breeds. Now don't quote me on this guys, but I'm gonna do the Dash Hound color. I just kind of looked at some pictures online of some real Dash Hounds. I'm gonna do the black with brown, but I am gonna paint him black first, and then I will show you after how I put the brown on. All right, so I did paint some brown part on here as you can see just a little bit here in between just over the eyes it's going to kind of be over the eyes a little bit on the sides now i'm not the best painter when it comes to that so it was a little bit i don't want to say it was a challenging for me because i don't really paint like that uh but anyways it worked out and little whisker parts there where you can see i just actually used um one of these little tools from DT and you can take the smaller side and I just went over it like that. Now, the best thing I could suggest for you is just looking at a picture of a dash hound, um, kind of what kind of colors you did. So like I said, so I did do the feet and I just did them kind of messy looking because it is hair and it's never even. I did mix uh, two of the DT paints, the espresso and the cashmere tan. And I always find that these little cups, the condiment cups from DT work really well when you're doing layers and you don't want the paint to dry out. You can just pop the lid on so it doesn't dry out while you're waiting. Now that I have that done, we're going to move on to the ears. Now, I just took some, you can buy some DT felt. This is just a big roll. I just cut out a shape like this and I just put it on. I just freehand kind of the style. And when I was cutting it out, I just used my white chalk marker along the sides. But once I cut it out, I make sure that I take some of the white out just according to size. And I did that four times. So you're gonna need four pieces of felt. Let me just move this here. Just like you're gonna need four pieces like this for the ears because you're gonna glue them together. Now they look huge and you gotta remember when you actually glue them together along the side, just gonna open it up and glue a little bit at a time. And as you go along, just lift it up and go all the way around. Once it is glued, you turn it inside out. Once you turn it inside out, it's gonna end up being a lot smaller than you think. So just, I had to play around with twice once I made them way too small, and then I got to the better size. We will glue those and I will just put some hot glue and glue it on the side like this. Wait till it dries and then you can easily just bend it over. So they're just a little bit long, but I'm okay. You know, long floppy ears is cool. Once I get those two glued on to do the ears, we are gonna do the nose is just a pom pom ball, a small one. I just end up taking some scissors and I just end up cutting the back so it's flat, not round, so it doesn't stick out too much. And you're just gonna wanna place it right, right in the middle of his nose. Now, this was the fun part. I've seen someone else do this and it wasn't from a crafting group. It was from Monster Eyes, I guess, I think is what the title was. And I don't remember the channel, unfortunately, but I did look at different ways because I'm not all about googly eyes and I really like button eyes. And anyway, so I did look up um, a few different videos of techniques and I kind of played around with it myself. 
Um, they had different techniques. I just found what worked best for me and what I wanted to do. And just kind of looking at the Dash Hound was more of a chocolate brown eyes, tanned with the big uh, black circle in the middle. So I just have these glass gems. I just kind of took the smaller ones because you can't get bigger ones. So I think these were the smallest ones you could get. And you're going to start with a glass gem. Best way to do it. I'm just going to show you on here because I've already did one. I'm just going to take a glue stick. Stab the end. And right on the gem, I'm just going to make sure that it's all covered on the bottom. I think I've got a little bit on the side here. And you're just going to dab it right in the middle like that so it gives you a nice circle. So the one I did a little bit bigger is a big. So depending how big you want the circle on there, that's how I did that. Now the next thing you're going to do is I grab some cashmere tan. I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to show you. I just have to grab my brushes over here. Just going to grab some cashmere tan and you're just going to go on the outside. You're not going to do the sides of the eyes, just on the top flat part of the gem. And you're just going to do a layer like this. Once you have that done, you're going to let it dry. And then you're going to take this little tool from DT and right where the black ends, you're going to make lines. But you got to make sure this paint is fully dry before you do that. Once the lines, you have the little lines in there, you're going to you can mix some colors, whatever colors you want to do. I took some gold from DT, the gold metallic, and then I painted exactly what I just did. Once that gold is dry, you're going to do the lines again, exactly the same all the way around. And then you're going to add another layer of cashmere tan, so that will be three layers. And then you're just going to scrape it the exact same way. And then you're gonna have, it's probably hard to show here, I'm trying to show you here. You're gonna have a nice little glass eye like that. And it just kind of looks like the pupil. I went a little bit too much into the black, but that's okay, I still think it's super cute. And I'm just gonna show you here, I got some black paint on me and I'm gonna get it all over myself. And you're just gonna put them on just like that. I think that's going to be super cute. So let me finish this off and then we're going to move to the tail. All right, guys. So I got everything glued on. I think the eyes turned out really well. They're just kind of really neat looking. Um, the video that I spoke to of earlier, I tried to find it and I couldn't find it, but they were using a lot bigger and they were using spray paint. So I just tried to see if it worked with acrylic and I just think it turned out really cool. Um, so now we have a spot missing right here. Now you could just cut a Jenga block because it is just one in there. You'd have to cut it maybe one third off. I'm not going to do that. I just grabbed... Um, a dog collar, small size from DT. I just went for the traditional black and white one. I didn't like some of the colors they had. And I'm just gonna measure it out and it's not gonna be as easy as the cat because this one is made smaller. The dog's made smaller. So I will just attach it and figure out where it needs to be changed. And once you do that, and it's a little bit tighter. It actually just covers that little Jenga block that is part of a Jenga block that's missing. So I'm just gonna take it in the back and cut it and then just hot glue it according to size. Now we are going to add the tail now. And if you watch my videos before uh, 
I like using hair rollers sometimes for arms and I did a bigger hair roller for the Jenga block cat I did. And I took one of the ones from DT and I cut it right about there just to make it shorter. If you haven't seen me do this, I am gonna show you, um, what am I doing here? You're just gonna pull this down. Oh, and see, the little end falls right off. You're gonna just chop the wire, grab some pliers and just bend it over and hook that back on. I'm gonna put this back on so I don't lose it because I will probably need it for another one. Um, so I did one already. Now, I did cut around the foam to make it more thin so it wasn't like just stumpy on each end and the exact same. I actually cut the plastic as well down as just so it's a little bit smaller and it's just not so bulky on each ends and you can see that too and it does it's just easy to cut well this is probably not the best scissors but like that then I'm going to put it right on the one step down uh, was it this way I'm trying to remember which way I had it <laughs> I think it was this way um, I'm going to glue it right down there, hot glue it, and I think it's backwards, right on there. But before we hot glue it on, I am going to give it a coat of the DT black paint. Now, the one thing about my ears, I did find them, they were a little bit too long when I was doing them. And I'm just going to show you the one that I made that was too small. If you find that they're too big when you're trying to place it on the dog's head, just to make them shorter instead of redoing another one, all you have to do is just cut across and it just makes them shorter. Just so you don't waste, um, you know, making a whole nother one if they are too long. All right, guys, so I finally finished little Donnie's tail and I think it just turned out really cute. Now let's move on to the second DIY. I'm going to use something different. I'm not going to use Jenga blocks for this one. So let's get that one started. All right, so for the second DIY dog, we are not gonna use Jenga blocks. We are gonna do something a little different. You're gonna need a styrofoam ball. I'm gonna use this container from DT. I actually used this in replace of the Orby beads when everybody was making those centerpieces and I couldn't find any Orby beads, even online. It was like months and months delivery. So these ones were in the kitchen section with the detergents and everything. And I actually used the cranberry ones and I actually picked out the red ones because it was like 80% white and uh, there was just a couple like pinky ones uh, that I just ended up pulling out. And I ended up using a couple containers just to make the centerpiece. If you want to see the centerpiece, you can find it on my Crafty Shopper page on Facebook. So we're going to take the top off this and we are going to just around the lip of the container and I'm making a mess because I'm trying to rush here uh, and we're gonna just stick the styrofoam ball just like that right on top gonna make sure that this styrofoam ball is from Dollarama uh, I never really find any styrofoam balls at DT I don't know maybe your store sells them but I never find I only find sometimes little small ones in a little pack of a couple every once in a while okay we're gonna do just like that. Then you're gonna need some fun fur. Now I have this roll here from, it's all matted for whatever reason, um, from Dollarama. Now this is the fun fur I usually use. It's like 450 and there's like six, uh, three meters of it. I went to Fabricland, that's one of the fabric stores here in Canada. And it's like $30 a meter for just a thin, It's it's actually crazy the amount of price. So I always use this. Uh, they've been in Dollaramas here quite often. It's kind of like, I guess, like would be equivalent in your, I guess like a Hobby Lobby or um, your DT Plus stores. You're gonna need five pieces. So when I'm cutting fun fur and I always have my crafting, uh, you can see my crafting comb actually needs a, uh, a good uh, I need a new one <laughs> when I'm cutting uh, the fur I find out where I'm gonna exactly cut it 
and you're just kind of like parting hair one way and making sure it's even because if you just cut it straight across you're going to have this part of the first straight and it's going to kind of look like a I guess like a mullet look and then it doesn't look as nice and then you're going to cut along that line now I've already pre-cut five strips now I got the five strips here with the fur so I didn't clean it off here with the fur facing down, we are just gonna glue, I don't know if we'll need five, we're gonna glue right along the lip of the container and the fur down. So when I measured it from the fur down, you just wanna make sure the top, not the long part, the top uh, backing of the fur is lined up to the bottom of the container so that when it sits, it will be like the fur sticking out like that. All right, now that I did, I glued it all the way around. There was a little piece I had to put um, kind of like um, a long sliver in just to fill in the gape, the gap. <laughs> um, so now we're going to pick a front and I'm not, I'm not going to do it where the corners of the jar is. I'm actually going to make the front one of the corners. We're going to put it down. I'm going to get another two pieces. One's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to put this as the front. Kind of keep a mark where the front is. I'm not going to give you dimensions just because if you use a different container. Because you can use different containers. Maybe you have something at home that you have so you don't have to go buy one of these containers. I'm going to do the longer part. I'm going to glue it right along the lip here. And put it. And it's going to be a little bit past the middle line if you want to call it on the top of the head so that's why the other piece is a little bit shorter and i'm going to attach it so you want to make sure the fur is going down on the back and the fur is going down on the front all right i did the front and back and i did this side already but i'm going to show you about the other side so the hairline is a little bit more to the back like i said earlier and I laughed when I turned it this way. I said, oh, cave woman. <laughs> I thought it was a little, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I thought I could share. Uh, so on the side, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're just going to keep the hair down because you just want, don't want to get some hot glue on it. We're going to do another piece right in the middle like I did on the other side. But we're going to kind of round it, uh, round it up so that it fits like that and you're gonna hot glue that on and right to the bottom then you're gonna notice you have these little pieces on the side and I already cut them but I'm gonna have to once this is glued on I'm just gonna have to round the corners and put the pointies just how it fits right in there when we get this on we get uh, to the fun part now that I have all the fur glued on as you can see that I've been playing with some of the hair just where I'm trying to design the face I want some hair up top this is more like the eyebrows but the line right between where the foam ball and the plastic container is I'm gonna add a collar now I didn't get, was able to get out to uh to the store I thought I had one on hand I just had some glitter I wanted some pink glitter because I'm gonna make it a girl um, I didn't have any um, the, any pink, so I'm just going to use gold, and I'm just going to hot glue it, and just make sure you brush up all the hair that's around the neck, and then just keep brushing it around like that. Just going to add it on. I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to feel where it is. And then you're just going to want to hot glue it like that. I was just thinking too, if you don't have one of those foam balls, maybe you have a, a Christmas globe, you, you know, a Christmas ball, or even one of those snow globes at home that you could, and I'm sure that would fit in the container if you can't find one of the styrofoam balls. Now that I got the collar glued on all the way around, I was just playing with the fur. So you just kind of like styling... I don't want to say a kid's hair, but uh, just making the fur nice and neat. Up here, we're going to do kind of like a faux hawk. 
I'm gonna put some eyes here. So I'm just trying to play with where I'm gonna exactly have it. So now we're gonna add some ears to it. And it's gonna be the same as when we were doing the side. So it just depends how long you want the, the ears on your dog. And you wouldn't wanna just glue it on like this because you will see the lip right here all the way around. So what you're gonna do is just fold it over and I just glued it, just bent the sides. I didn't do the bottom because you won't be seeing the bottom. So I did two of those. And if you don't have enough hair as well right here, I just cut an extra piece that you can just add in there to give it a little bit more fullness. On the sides, I will add them closer to the top and you're gonna put them right here. And what I wanna make sure that they're close enough because I wanna grab some hair from here to stick up as well in the little, the little bow we're gonna do. I'm just gonna show you here. So that we can just stick it up and stick a little bow in the top. All right, I got everything glued on. I use a little rubber band for the top, you know, the little tiny ones you use for kids' hair. I just find the clip wasn't holding the hair very well. Uh, ears are on really good. Now with the face, I am just gonna use a pom-pom and put it right there. This would be a great craft to do with, um, with your kids, grandkids, nieces, um, just because it's easy enough to do thing is just making sure that you find uh, enough fur to have the long hair to have the shaggy look for I'm just going to do a little tongue just a little piece of foam paper it's a little bit big I am going to trim it down just a little bit and I am just going to try to stick it more in the fur um, when I glue it in and then the vase fillers I did like little Donnie is just with some glass gems. I did two layers of brown and then the final layer was gold just to give it a little bit of, so it pops a bit. Whenever I found, because I've played around with these, I'm just gonna show you these on that one side here. I'm gonna put that there. So I think he turned out super cute. It's kind of like a shaggy little dog. I don't even know what kind of dog this is. Uh, I'm not good with the breeds, like I said earlier, but I think he just turned out super sweet. I, I was gonna hang a little something there. Um, that's why I was trying to look for a different collar, but that's okay. I'm just happy, simple. Uh, when when I was doing the cat, um, the Jenga block cat, I was playing around with the blue eyes um, and I just thought they were just kind of funny looking when I did them. Uh, so I didn't end up using them, I ended up using the googly eyes, but there's so many different things you could do with these eyes. Like these are only, this will be like the third one I've done. This is a little bit of practice and it's just good for a different idea than putting the googly eyes because I'm not, not, not really a big fan of them. I am just going to turn the camera around and have them sitting here, both of them, uh, little Donnie, and I haven't thought of her na a name for her. So by the time I switch the camera over, I'll have a name for her. All right, guys, here they are. We got little Donnie. I just think he's super cute. Covers up the little half missing Jenga block there. Got a little fire hydrant. Um, he reminds me of my friend's dog. That's why I call him little Donnie because she has a dog similar colors and but he's a lot bigger dog. And then we got Rosie. Another friend of mine has a, a little dog that's similar. I'm not sure what breed that is but I think I think she turned out pretty cute. And I think the eyes turned out really well. If you guys notice um, anything with my video, uh, kind of zooming in and zooming out with the focus, uh, it's reason because I got um, a new iPhone. So there's been a problem and there's an issue with it. So I am taking it in tomorrow to get it looked at at the Apple store. But uh, happy crafting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Let me know what you guys want to see made. Uh, put in the comments what you would like me to make and the most, I usually like different ideas. You guys uh, give me a lot of ideas on my Facebook Crafty Shopper page and I appreciate it. Happy crafting. See you soon. Bye.